It's January 2017 at the headquarters of the African Union here in Ethiopia. An IT engineer is looking at the servers in this building and something seems off. The engineer notices that often in the middle of the night these servers are connecting to some server in Shanghai and uploading emails and audio files. The African Union headquarters was built in 2012 but it was not paid for by any African nation. The impressive new headquarters of the African Union, entirely funded by the Chinese government. This building was a $200 million gift from the Chinese government. It was designed and built by Chinese firms with Chinese money. And yes, the servers were installed by Chinese engineers, who, it appears, left an intentional back door into the servers so that they were easily accessible. The African Union IT team eventually removed these Chinese servers and installed new ones. The Chinese government literally offered to install them for them, but they, they declined. The local IT people also swept the building and they found microphones embedded in the furniture and in the walls. The whole building was bugged and had been feeding audio and internal emails to China for like five years since the building was built. China building a headquarters for the African Union and then spying on it is a pretty good symbol of what China is up to in Africa. And that's what this video is about. It's about how a growing China has rushed into Africa, mainly by building a bunch of stuff. Roads, trains, dams, mines, ports. These projects are a part of China's growth as a superpower. And it shows how this country is projecting its power on the continent of Africa. But there are questions here over why the headquarters of such an important African organization is entirely the work of Chinese construction, labor, and money. Okay, so there's this very predictable thing that you see time and time again as countries get powerful. As a country gets rich, they often start looking outward, both economically and militarily. L let me explain what I mean here. 50 years ago, China was a very poor country with a huge population. But eventually they opened up to the world. They opened up their huge population as a workforce for cheap labor. And their economy exploded. China is agrarian. Urbanizing fast? You betcha. But still agrarian. Most in terms of land, not population. Come on, Michael. No, <laughs> no, you're wrong about this. So now China is a very rich country. And remember, rich countries start looking outward. How can they project their power, connect with other countries to continue their growth? They do this for a couple of reasons. The first one is the economic reason. In the same way that the US got really rich and prosperous and started to look outward to China for cheap labor, China also got rich and its labor eventually got expensive, wages went up, and China needed its own option for cheap labor and new growth opportunities. So they started pouring huge amounts of money, like $300 billion huge, into Africa. Okay, so that's the economic reason. China grows really fast, their growth is slowing down, so they need to invest in emerging economies, is what the economists will call it. Economies that haven't developed very quickly yet, but that with a little bit of investment could start to grow. Untapped markets. But the economic explanation is only half the story here. In China, economics and government power are not very separate. So to understand what China is really up to, you have to understand the geopolitical motives. And to do that, we gotta look at a map. Here are all the countries that China has projects in. And yes, I've just highlighted every single country on the African continent. I mean, besides this one down here, this little tiny country of Swaziland, they're the one holdout on all of this. These projects range from transportation projects like roads and trains, to energy like oil and dams, to real estate projects like housing developments, and then mining for things like copper. You have everything from a shoe factory in Ethiopia, to a $6 billion Chinese financed dam in Nigeria, to a massive suspension bridge in Mozambique, the longest in Africa. I mean, these projects are everywhere, even here on this tiny island off the coast where China has poured millions of dollars to build housing, a stadium, an auditorium, a library, as well as their national parliament. 
trying to build it all. There are too many of these projects to even count. And honestly, if you take it as a whole, a lot of these projects have been a major benefit and economic stimulus to these countries' economies. But why is China doing this? What are they up to? Well, in addition to all the economic value of investing in emerging markets, China's president also claims that they're doing this in the name of cooperation and friendship. The African way. Let's dig into this and actually see what these projects look like and how they are built and if it truly is the African way, whatever that means. Okay, so there's this really impressive rail system that China built in Kenya. It goes from Nairobi to Mombasa in just under four hours, which is faster than any train in the United States, which let's be honest here, isn't really saying much because here in the United States, we don't really know how to build trains anymore. We used to be really good at it and now we're not. It's kind of a shame and oh. anyway, look at this train in Kenya. This railway system was a $3.6 billion project, the most expensive infrastructure project since Kenya's independence. And it was mostly entirely paid for by a giant loan from China's state-run bank. So it was financed by China, designed by Chinese engineers, and then built by Chinese construction firms that sent Chinese workers to hire locals and manage the project. And now it's a Chinese company that actually runs the thing. If you ride this train, you're gonna see all the safety announcements and all of the documentation in Chinese, in Mandarin. It is very clear who financed and built this thing. It looks like China just parachuted in and plopped this thing down in Kenya. And now Kenya has billions of dollars of debt that they have to pay back to China eventually. In fact, 72% of all of Kenya's debt is owed to China. And this railway was meant to reduce congestion on the highway that runs parallel to it, but it hasn't done that. In fact, this railway cuts right through like these two national parks. While the train will offer passengers a view of a lifetime while passing through the national park, conservationists are concerned that this construction will affect the ecosystem and the wildlife that live here. And it's actually not doing what it said it was going to do. So yes, Kenya has this big shiny railway, but it wasn't really solving African issues in the African way. Meanwhile, the Chinese construction workers who came to build this thing were caught treating the local workers very poorly, making them sit at separate tables during meal breaks, punishing them when they didn't complete deadlines or take out the garbage on time. That mixed with the fact that some of these Chinese workers were taking bribes as a part of a huge corruption scheme with this railway. And it's clear that this project wasn't actually about supporting the local environment. It just left Kenya with a giant pile of debt and a big shiny railway. But listen, that's not always the case. There are tons of these projects and some of them are truly helping the locals, like this big, beautiful, shiny road here in Lesotho. This used to be a rough gravel road and it is now a beautiful, shiny road that is helping the locals move around in their country. So it's, it's definitely a mixed bag. And listen, I get it. China, you want to give a $5 billion loan to Nigeria to build a dam because Nigeria has 200 million people, many of them young, and you want to help them become a booming economy so that you can get in on some of that growth. Oh, and you love the fact that you don't have to adhere to any environmental standards while you're doing these projects, which I know you love, China. I know it. That's the business rationale. We're looking for new economies to invest in and be a part of their growth. But if you look a level deeper, you won't just see a bunch of investment projects. You'll see a bunch of free gifts from China. And I'm intrigued by especially the political ones. Like when China shows up and builds a, like a new parliament building, which they've done for seven countries in Africa. Or when China offers 32 million free dollars to build a new headquarters for ECOWAS, which is basically the economic union in Western Africa. They do this for free. We will build you a new headquarters. <sighs> Well, let me be clear. There is no such thing as a free gift in international relations. Everything has strings attached. So a major part of all of this investment in Africa is China investing in its future as a global superpower who needs to have friends and has historically not had a lot of friends throughout the world because the big boy United States has been doing all the friending by giving people stuff and making their lives better so that they can be allies. So China is getting in on this. And China has used their checkbook to make friends with literally every single country in Africa. 
Of course, besides Swaziland, the teeny little country in the south that has been the one country that has held out on all of this. In funneling all of this money into these countries, China has been able to get all of these countries, besides Swaziland, to not recognize Taiwan anymore and to support China instead. The TLDR on that is that you can't support Taiwan and China because they both think that they're China, so you have to support one or the other. And so China has been getting everyone to denounce Taiwan and say that they support China. That's a whole other thing. I'm making videos about that. Suffice it to say that China has been using its checkbook to get all of these people to be their friends. It's sort of like the, 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 the rich kid in middle school who like brings you an MP3 player because he wants you to be his friend and you're like, sweet, if you give me your MP3 player, I'll be your friend. I, I grew up in the early 2000s in uh, my middle school, there were MP3 players. So sorry for the throwback. But remember when China built the African Union headquarters and then bugged the entire building so that they could spy on the leaders and their emails and their conversations. That is a perfect representation of the strings that are usually attached to these projects. But perhaps the less obvious but more dangerous strings attached are the debts. John Adams said it best when he said, quote, there are two ways to conquer and enslave a country. One is by the sword and the other is by debt. It's a pretty intense quote, but it really applies here. So many of these projects have been paid for by Chinese money through loans, African nations diving deep into debt. We all know that when you owe someone money, that person has a lot of power over you, especially if you get to the point where you can't pay them back. And this isn't just theoretical. A few years ago, China helped Sri Lanka build a port here in the southeastern coast. It was done with a Chinese loan. With time, Sri Lanka struggled to pay back that loan. So in 2017, China swooped in and said, can't pay back your debt? No worries. Just lease us this port. Let us have it for 99 years. And Sri Lanka is like, that doesn't sound great. Giving a piece of our sovereign territory to China, which they could potentially use for military, but we are in so much debt and they're offering to relieve some of that debt if we give them this port. <sighs> okay. So this port now belongs in part to China. This sets a dangerous precedent that could be applied to many of these nations in Africa who have sunk themselves deep into debt with China and may not be able to pay it back in the future. So China is growing and honestly behaving like any superpower would when they are growing this quickly. I mean, <laughs> if we wanted to make a video about how the US has projected power throughout the years, it would be a lot worse of a video, okay? So let's just make it clear that China's a superpower, they're doing their superpower thing, this is very normal superpower behavior. Doesn't make it right, it just makes it very normal and typical. China has taken a specific interest in Africa, which has led to countless infrastructure projects, which have been honestly an impressive sight to behold, but has raised questions of what are the actual motives here? They're not just business and economic. And the bigger question that I wanna keep an eye on going forward is how is all this debt gonna play out? How will African nations who are so deeply indebted to China have to service that debt in the future and what will happen if they can't pay it back.